Holy Scripture. 2 Kings 4 verses 1 through 7. I need to read all of it for you to have the context of the text. Watch what 2 Kings 4 verses 1 through 7 says. I want you to read silently as I read aloud. The wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that he revered the Lord. But now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. Elisha replied to her, How can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? Your servant has nothing there at all, she said, except a small jar of oil. Elisha said, go around, ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Don't just ask for a few. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons. Pour oil onto all the jars and as each is filled, put it on one side. She left him, shut the door behind her and her sons. They brought the jars to her and she kept pouring. When all the jars were full, she said to her son, bring me another one. But she, he replied, there is not a jar left. Then the oil stopped flowing. She went and told the man of God and he said, go sell the oil and pay your debts. You and your sons can live on what is left. You may be seated. Arm yourself, please, with that writing instrument, even with your tablet. I, I want to preach for a little while today using as a subject, you are not going to work me like a slave. You are not going to work me like a slave. The axiom that needs to be announced to all African Americans is, working for others may make you rich, but working for yourself will make you wealthy. I want you to write that down, please. Working for others may make you rich, but make working for yourself is what will make you wealthy. Deposed and assassinated Libyan leader, Muammar Gaddafi, understood this well when assessing the global economic landscape. It dawned on him that something was off kilter with Africa having the most natural resources on earth but perpetually finding itself in poverty, beholden to Western currency. He hatched the idea that if Euro, Europe could come together and form the Euro, then why couldn't all of the African nations unite to form the Afro, knowing it could be backed by its limitless supply of oil, gold, and diamonds? If, in fact, this plan would have, in fact, come to bear, it would have, in fact, obliterated the Rothschild banking industry, the stock market, and even the European pound as we know it. As a consequence, in 2011, he was ordered executed by the banking community under the Obama administration because they feared if it came to pass, the American dollar would weaken and the New York Stock Exchange would go belly up. My dear friends, whenever you mobilize towards independent wealth, brace yourself for an attack by diabolical powers that don't want you to be free, but always want you subservient to them. It should be noted that his assassination was not carried out by the FBI or the CIA, but was orchestrated, hear this, by the Transition Committee. The most difficult thing that you will ever do in life is transition. You have to be ever so careful that you don't allow your transition to kill you. 
people like you even when you're unhealthy. But if you ever try to change, notice that forces that you didn't even know paid you attention will zero in as a threat to your advancement. Since Gaddafi's death in 2011, Libya has been riddled with governmental unrest. If you can imagine, we're just a stone's throw away from 2018. And since 2011, there's been no election. No leadership in place. The whole nation seems to be running in anarchy. Gang leaders and corrupt military have seemingly seized the day. It is almost as if, if you can imagine, the bloods and the crips running the city. Libya is the last gateway into Europe. It's the very last gateway into Europe. It would be akin to Texas and Mexico. So many Africans who dream of a better opportunity from Nigeria, from Senegal, from Ghana, they go through Libya in order to escape into Europe. That is, in fact, the last way station. This year alone, you would, in fact, be blown away to know this year alone, 3,000 Africans have drowned in the Mediterranean Sea trying to get into Europe. The racket that unearthed by CNN is that those who were from Nigeria when they reached Libya, watch this, were promised safe passage only to be held hostage by goons who didn't want to let them pass. As of this hour, clutch your pearls, you're about to have an asthma attack. As of this moment, while you're in the safety of sanctuary, there are 400,000 to 1 million Africans being held hostage in Libya. You mean to tell me nobody can send in troops? Nobody can, in fact, engage militaristic intervention? I dare think for one moment, what do you think the response would be if there were 400,000 Irish people being held hostage? How do you think the world would respond if there were a half million people from Norway being held hostage? But whenever black people find themselves being held back, it as if the world doesn't even care. I'm preaching now to a people that used to use the hashtag, bring back our girls. But after six weeks, you got bored and tired of it and went on back to watch love and hip hop. What happens when our people find ourselves being incarcerated? Oh, you don't need Libya for that. In case you forgot, there's a prison pipeline right here in the United States with over one million black men and women being held here this for nonviolent offenses and you fighting in Walmart over a PlayStation? To go even further, 400,000 to 1 million are being held against their will, being murdered, being raped, being beaten, and many of them are being sold into slavery. Many of you are being held against your will by forces you don't even recognize. Not metal chains, but you've got a chain around your thinking. It is what Naeem Akbar calls the psychological chains and images of slavery that you find yourself beholden to debt and to a mortgage. Trying to keep up with the Joneses, not realizing the Joneses have already moved. While being contained, the smugglers have the nerve to charge, watch this, the encaptured $40 a week for upkeep. Did you hear what I just said? They're being charged $40 a week for upkeep while they're being held against their will knowing they don't have it. And when it is that they have amassed a significant amount of debt, then to clear their conscience, 
they sell them for slavery. Sell them to slavery for $400 a person. In case you're in a time bubble, I'm not talking about 1776. I'm talking about 2017. And I'm talking about as late as this past Tuesday. It's a vicious diabolical cycle. It's not a pretty way to live having to work just to pay off your debt. It's not the will of God for you to spend your entire life working like a slave just to pay off bills. Do you think that all God has done for you was just for you to pay utilities? Just for you to have enough for insurance, just enough for you to cover car? No, is that the size of the God that you serve? Do you think God wants you to spend all of your life paying off student loans? Do you think that it is God's permissive will for you to spend the rest of your healthy days paying off the bill from when you were sick? On the pages of the book, The Jewish Phenomenon, there are three principles for you to apply to gradually pay down your debt and to earn something that your parents never told you called a savings account. Isn't it amazing, if not unnerving, that the average black person in this room does not have $50,000 worth of equity and will in fact have to spend the twilight of your days living off of social security. I'm going to give you three things, please. I want you to write them down. Three things that I think can help you almost immediately change the course of your spending so that you're not working the rest of your life like a slave. Number one, would you write this down, please? The first one is keep driving. Would you write that down? Keep driving. What does that mean? For some of you, this is going to be a cultural nuance that's going to give you a, a black eye and a bloody nose. Buy a moderately priced car cheaper than what you can afford. The moment you drive off the lot, your car depreciates in value. Your car is not a reflection of who you are or your personality. It is not an extension of yourself. Stop giving your car a name. It is not a person. <laughs> Get a moderately priced car. Watch this. Knowing it depreciates in value that in fact has lower maintenance. Negroes go to test drive a car. First thing we do is turn on the radio. <laughs> how this sound and you're not asking the critical questions in terms of maintenance upkeep oil change part of the Jewish goal is to have no car note God I just said something so radical that you've never even thought about a day in your life. That's what I want you to move towards in 2018 is no car note. Can, can you imagine what that's going to free up for you and for your family? If, if you believe God can do that for you, I want you to make that declaration out loud. No car note. Ideally, watch this, ideally you ought to be able to get a car that can handle going up to 100,000 miles. It is wisdom knowing that cars depreciate to get a gently used car. That don't mean you're cheap, it means you're wise. For the first time in American history, for the first time in American history, there are more used car lots than new car lots. You have to take full advantage of it, but you have to do your due diligence to find out what is the background on that car. Get the car facts. First thing that you're going to do in terms of paying down your debt, not working like a slave, is doing what? 
Come on, class, what are you going to do? The second thing that you're going to do is don't drive through. Would you write that down, please? Don't drive through. Pastor, what do you mean by that? Your average lunch costs $12 and a tip. I want you to challenge yourself for the balance of this year going into 2018. I want you to give yourself a challenge for those that don't already do it is bring your own lunch once a week. If you're bringing your own lunch at least once a week, watch this, that saves you $416 a year. If you're starting, watch this, and you can hear my voice, and you are 25, and you start today, that will, in fact, amass for you 174000 by retirement at 65, with no investments, just bringing your lunch once a week. Eat at home more frequently. There's no demographic in this nation that eats out as much as black people. If in fact you eat at home more frequently, the savings will accumulate to $350 a month. Putting into your nest egg 108,000 by the time you retire. It's gonna be a rough one, it's gonna get rough I'm getting ready to open the doors of the church right now. The preachers are getting ready to bring me oil. I'm, I'm telling you, those of you who are watching online, you're getting ready to fall out, but I need you to have it. Cut out Starbucks. Is there one? <laughs> Cutting out Starbucks for 15 years. Cutting out Starbucks for 15 years will bring for you $217,000. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Are y'all still here? I'm feeling tomatoes coming at me this way. Cutting down on your debt, building your savings, the first thing you're going to do is what? Y'all are feeling me. Say it again, please. What's the second thing you have to do? Here's the third one. Y'all stay with me. You can get uncomfortable. Just look straight ahead. I need you to just write it down like you ain't even paying attention to what I'm saying. Third one, sex drive. All right. <laughs> Y'all ain't even heard what I got to say yet. The first one is what? What's the second one? Here's the third one, sex drive. Married couples on average, I want you to write this down. Married couples on average have four times the income of single people. It got real quiet. <laughs> the national rate for divorce is 50%. The national rate, watch this, for the divorce of millionaires is 12%. One of the lead contributors for debt is divorce. Divorce will catapult you into debt with legal fees, alimony, child support, housing, Therapy. I want you to write this in all caps, in all caps. This ain't even for you, this is for your friend. I want you to write this in all caps. Marriage is your best financial investment. <laughs> for the first time, you said it at the right time. <laughs> <laughs> Marriage. <laughs> y 
Y'all come back now. Come back. <laughs> Marriage is your best investment. Watch this. Because marrying wrong will be your greatest liability. Most times when we go through premarital counseling, particularly in church, we talk about whether or not you are spiritually equal and not economically equal. And when I talk about economic equality, I am not talking about do you make the same? Do you have the same value for money? God, y'all better say something to me here because you can work like a slave, but if you are married to somebody who spins like one and has no value for your sacrifice and for the hard work because they have a false sense of entitlement and you watch this being deluded by a church that taught you inappropriately that because that's my boo I gotta give them everything y'all ain't saying nothing to me and then at the end of your marriage you got nothing to show for it something is out of order can I just say a word to single people married I'm going to come to you in a minute all the single people who are in the room I prophesy over your life God please don't send them somebody who is financially irresponsible I don't care if you can pray fast, shout, sing run around the church but if you can't balance a checkbook you are not for me if you don't know the value of home ownership you are not who God has sent into my life if you always spending out of our savings account over some fast money idea that never brings a return the devil is a lie but God sends somebody to their life that will add to them that will see the value in them and will understand delay gratification those of y'all that ain't shouting you ain't never dated nobody broke but those of you that know God kept me in spite of a bad financial love decision I speak over every married couple God y'all better get right there I'm trying to help somebody in here I speak over every married couple God in the name of Jesus over every married couple I speak divorce proof I speak over your life that God will so bless you that your retirement will not be spent in medical expenses I speak y'all ain't saying nothing to me I speak over every married couple that in your latter days all of your money will not go to finance grown children I speak over your life that you'll be able to do what it is you want to do and God will give you the desires of your heart and that your spouse will be restored as your best friend again and those of you that need God to do it I dare you to give God glory for it like God is at all oh, y'all ain't shouting I said give God glory like he's able to do it Sean stay right there I just feel like I need to do this this ain't even what I was preaching on today. I just feel this in the Holy Spirit. I speak for the restoration of marriages. Hallelujah. By the power of the Holy Ghost, God is canceling somebody's divorce. God, I wish I was in a real church. I said by the power of the Holy Ghost, God is reconciling somebody's marriage right now. Forget y'all spectators. But if you are in this room and you are getting ready to leave that marriage, but you trust in God to put it back together again, I need you to come shake my hand real quick. I'm believing God gonna restore your husband into his rightful place. Your wife is gonna be restored. I need somebody to open up your mouth. Hey, I come into agreement with you. I come into agreement with you. I come into agreement. I come into agreement with you. Your marriage will be restored. Your marriage will be restored. 
your marriage will be restored. Somebody shout out loud. Your marriage will be restored. You better shout like you believe it. Your marriage will be restored. When you lift up that hand, I dare you to give God glory like God is a reconciler. I'm coming to agreement with you. Come on, lift up that hand and open up your mouth. I need you to shout for marriages. I need you to cry out under God for healthy relationships. I need you to bless God that your house is a place of happiness again. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel this glory. A revival is coming. A revival is coming. I ain't talking about the church. I'm talking about the restoration of black families. A revival is coming. I can't hear nobody. The single people, y'all don't know no better. But I dare make couples. Would you lift up your hand? No sleeping in the guest room. No sleeping on the couch. No two separate addresses. God is restoring families. But what if, Pastor, what if you're not dealing with divorce? What if your problem is not eating at drive throughs but your greatest setback is debt? And that greatest setback of debt is dealing with death, the death of dreams the death of hopes, the death of expectation. Hallelujah. Sean, you can play for me right here. I want to do this, and I I don't know what God is up to in this moment. I'm not even finished preaching. I'm not even going to stop preaching, but I need to just do this very quickly. Two of you very quickly need to come join the church. I don't even know where you are, uh, but the power of the Holy Spirit is right on you in this moment. If you're in this place and you are arrested by God to say, this is the kind of church I need to be in. This is the kind of ministry where I know God is going to get the glory out of my life. Wherever it is that you are, forget about what these people say, whatever it is that they think. If you're in this room and you're saying, Pastor, you talking to me and you ain't even know you were talking to me. I know I'm upsetting the protocol and the order of how it is that we ordinarily flow, how it is that we ordinarily move. But I'm willing to risk putting the whole service online just for you to get to God. Just for you to find out wherever it is that you're supposed to be in the body of Christ called church. I don't care whether folk roll their eyes and they suck their teeth. Your life is so valuable to me that I'm willing to put everything on hold just for you to get to Jesus Christ. Just for you to join this church. Y'all gonna play hard to get? Do me a favor, please. Would you just check on your row? Ask the people on your row, are you saved? Do you have a church home? Do you need to give your life over to God? Don't you dare sit there another day knowing that you almost lost your family this year. You almost lost your child this year. You almost lost your mind this year. You almost lost your marriage this year. God is the God of another chance. Don't you let these church people fool you as if we ain't never fallen down like we ain't never made a mistake. Here come my two right now. I need somebody to give him glory like you know God is able. Hey. I can't hear nobody. I said give him glory like you know God is able. Here comes the third one. Would you shout right now? I want you right where you are. Just put them right on this front row. I'm going to get them in a minute. I'm going to still preach. Y'all got the three of them. Y'all go sit. I'm going to come get you. There's some other people that's getting ready to join you. So what happens? Thank you, Sean. What happens when your greatest pain is not divorce? It ain't eating out. You become a slave to debt. 
And here's what's amazing, you all, is, um, is that we find a woman in 2 Kings. And I got a problem with her because she reminds me of a lot of people who are in this 930 service. In 2 Kings chapter 4, she's crying out loud. Watch this. Because she is a first lady in the church. Her husband is a pastor. And her husband has just died. And his was crazy. Y'all ain't going to believe it. Is a, her husband gave his entire life for ministry and for church. Dies only to discover they have no insurance. God help me. It's a whole lot of people who are saved but don't make good financial decisions. And I'm trying to figure out how you have insurance for your iPhone but not for your life. God, 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 I can't hear nobody. How in the world do you have insurance for a galaxy but not for your grandchildren? And so after you die, the family got to sell lamps and minks and earrings just to bury your body. The devil is a lie. Can I challenge you? I know we don't talk about this kind of stuff in church no more. But for Christmas, make sure you got a policy. So that your family will never have to worry and struggle. And figure out what is needed and necessary. How many of y'all know I'm preaching good right through here? Is that you got to make sure you've got some insurance for your family. He dies. And now this former first lady is left as a single parent. We're trying to raise two sons by herself. And here's what's amazing, y'all, is that um, she cries out to a prophet. The creditors are coming. And I don't know where she is at this time, but it sounds like, please forgive me, it sounds like she's in Libya. Because she said, the two sons are coming and they're going to make my son slaves to pay off this debt. Can you do anything to stop the cycle? How, my dear friends, can I say to you as clearly, as candidly as I can, she said, the creditors are coming. Don't let them come for me. And I'm going to flip that thing around and I'm going to say to somebody who has been struggling as a single parent, struggling to keep your family together, struggling to make ends meet, struggling to keep the lights on. God told me to tell you the breakthrough is coming. Hallelujah. Y'all not getting this thing. Not only is the breakthrough coming, hear this, the interruption is coming. For everything that you need, only 50 of y'all feel like y'all are feeling me. I'm going to say to you, the finances that are necessary are coming. I can't hear nobody. The raise is coming. The promotion is coming. The advancement is coming. The new location for your business and your house is coming. I still can't hear nobody. The approval from the bank is coming and I don't know how y'all feel about it don't wait for it to get here thank God like it's already coming what I need for me and my children is coming she yells to the prophet the creditors are coming to take my sons away so I can pay off the debt the creditors aren't there, but they're coming. Hallelujah. There's some stuff that you have owed. Hallelujah. And it feels like the walls are coming in. And you're not sure how you're going to be able to balance and double dribble to handle the bills and provide Christmas. I can't hear no worshipers, but God said, did you forget who you serve? Hallelujah. You don't serve Santa Claus. You serve Jesus Christ. The problem with Santa is he only comes once a year. But when you got Jesus, every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. I feel like I need to tell you I don't have to wait until the 25th to get a blessing. But when I wake up tomorrow morning, I'm going to 
gonna tell myself weeping may endure for a night but joy is coming in the morning can I tell you by this time tomorrow heaven is gonna open up and everything that you've been in need of is getting ready to be provided for you y'all ain't saying nothing by this time tomorrow everything they thought to hold over your head is gonna be under your feet your blessing is on the way he may not come when you want him to come but he is Hallelujah, your neighbor don't know what you shouting for. But I need a thousand of you to say it's coming, it's coming. Hallelujah, if you ain't been waiting on nothing, don't say nothing. But if you've been waiting for God to move, I need you to just say it's coming. Everything that I ask God for is about to be added to me. Somebody shout it's coming. It's going to be exceedingly. It's going to be abundantly beyond what I can think, dream, hope, or even imagine. Somebody shout it's coming. It's going to be pressed down, shaken together, and even running over. Somebody shout it's coming. Some are going to get 20. Some are going to get 60. Some are going to get 80. But I'm going to get a 100 fold increase. Because I've been faithful over a few things. He's going to make me ruler over many. Give three people a high five and tell them it's coming. You've been in this place long enough. And the going's been kind of tough. But the struggle is already over it's coming y'all got stuck up people around you find two more people tell them everything you need is on the way when the praises go up the blessings you see that please I just need somebody to tweet that it's coming it's coming it's coming it's coming be seated I got to show you something she cries to Elisha I'm gonna lose everything and my sons because of debt I'm gonna free 50 y'all and thank me after service Elisha then says, what can I do to help you? What do you have in your house? 50 y'all, I'm getting ready to help you. Thank your pastor later. What can I do to help you? That's what Elisha says to the woman that's struggling. Pastor, why you keep telling me that? Because watch this, the man of God never gives her money. God help me you got to be freed from this obligation just because you love people you don't have a responsibility to finance them God I can't hear nobody give them direction on how they can get money for themselves because if I keep giving you money in March you're gonna be in the same position but I gotta show you how to get it for yourself He does not give her currency. He gives her counsel. Stop bailing grown people out. God, y'all don't like this here. Some of y'all can't shout because of who's sitting next to you. I said stop bailing grown people out who are able-bodied. I do not work this hard to provide for both of us. I got my own family to take care of and how dare you try to make me feel bad for not rescuing you. I am not a first responder. Call 911 if it's a real emergency. Says what do you have? 
It says the only thing that I have is a low oil. The beauty empowerment is that she realizes that my oil has value. God help me. She's down on her luck. See, and he asked her, what do you have? Did y'all not notice she never begins to name what kind of person she has? What kind of shoes she got in the closet? What do you have that has value? And she says, all I got is oil. He said, well, if you got oil, we can work with that. God help me because you don't even understand is that your oil will bring you the wealth that you need but in order for it to get done the first thing you got to do is shut the door pastor why you want me to shut the door because when you in this transition don't let outsiders in your business that, that they don't need to know what you working on and they don't need to know what you working with you got to sometimes struggle in silence until you able to get back on your feet shut the door but he says do not just shut the door with you in the room alone would y'all be seated you're making me nervous we got visitors from Germany be seated I gotta show you this watch this says when you shut the door shut the door I need y'all to get it with your sons in it because in this season your children need to know why you work this hard God I can't hear nobody cause y'all are raising these bougie negroes who don't have a work ethic and feel like you just supposed to give them everything that they ask for the devil is a lie do you know what it costs me to buy these tennis shoes you want and I get them and you got the nerve to come home with C's and D's shut the door shut the door tell your children what is the reality of your finance don't just tell your children no tell them why you telling no god i can't hear nowhere i'm not telling you i'm not buying you the cartridge to be mean but I got to figure out how I'm going to keep the lights on. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. And it's more important for me to make sure you got lights on and a hot shower than you got the world craft to play with in my living room. Somebody got to make a sacrifice and I ain't going to die being my child's slave. So shut the door. Watch this. And then tell the sons, bring me the vessels. Because I am not going to work this hard and my children not participate. Because I refuse to raise lazy ingrates. God, I only need 20 of y'all that feel like me. I raise children. I'm not going to raise grandchildren. God, 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 I can't hear nobody in here. And if I don't give you the tools now, you gonna think I'm daddy daycare. The devil is a lie. We gotta figure out when I get up, everybody getting up. Somebody gotta get a work ethic. Says I need you, you got oil, but you got nothing to put it in. So go to your neighbors. And tell your neighbors, watch this, just give you empty vessels. Make sure that they're empty. Yeah. Pastor, why? Because when you get this breakthrough, I don't want your neighbors to think that they got a part in your success. That they gave you an empty vessel. She, um, she begins pouring the oil into the jars until that one son says um, we don't have anything left 
I want to say this to you, and I want you to look at the text, 2 Kings chapter 4, verse number 6. It's going to blow your mind. You done ran through the text so often you forgot to look at it. In, uh, in verse 1, the creditors are coming to take my two boys. Look at verse number four. Go inside, shut the door behind you, you and your sons. Pour oil on all the jars. Do y'all see that in your Bible? Verse five, she left him, shut the door behind her and her sons. They brought the jars to her and kept pouring. I'm now in verse number six and my time is woefully over. When all the jars were full. Look at verse six. Me the minister, if you'll put that on the screen for me. Look at verse six, it's gonna blow your mind. She said to her Son, singular. Now the creditors are coming for both of them. We find in verse number one. In verse four, the prophet says, watch this, get both of them. But now that they starting to flow, only one son is obedient. Hallelujah. I don't want you to miss it. Why, Pastor? Because I don't want just one of your children to do well. I want all of your children to have financial independence. I'm closing out now. Verse number seven. It says, watch it. She gets the oil and keeps pouring until she got no vessels left. He said, now, watch this. I'm turning you from a first lady to an entrepreneur. That I had is getting ready to bless you. Uh, I, I didn't even mean to go this long today. I had to get the man away from you to you to discover the business that was in you. So I used you being by yourself just so you could discover what gift you possess. God, I can't hear nobody. Some of y'all ought to be shouting why. Because had you stayed in that place, you would have never found out your full capacity. You would have never known what it is that you able to do. God said, I used to break up the divorce, the death, the separation, just for you to find out what kind of businesswoman you are. He says, what's this? sell all the oil and notice this he says two things and I'll leave you here and it's going to pay off all your bills your sons will not be able to, to go into slavery and here's the last part and I hope you'll get it he says this oil you have will not just pay off your bills it's going to give you enough for you to live off of for the rest of your life I want you to lift up that hand. I want to prophesy something to you that I don't want you to miss. All these churches talking about you're going to be a millionaire. You're going to be, a de de going to be debt free. But we don't preach about the work ethic that's connected. That in order for you to get it, your children and your family got to be on the same page. That we got a goal in mind. I want you to lift up that hand. I want to prophesy over you. I speak over your life that 2018, you ain't going to struggle like you did this year. God, I can't hear nobody. In 2018, you're not going to work harder. You're going to work smarter. I need 50 of y'all to shout out loud. In 2018, your children are going to bring value into the house. In 2018, all your money ain't going out, but money is going to start coming in. In 2018, your oil is going to start making money for you. And those of you, your faith is connected to mine. That you are not going to be a slave to a job. You're not going to be a slave to bills. And here's your best shout, you ain't going to be a slave to family. But God is give, may give you financial independence. If your faith really resonates with that, I want you to give God glory for it like you believe it. I said give God glory for it like you believe God will do it. Stand to your feet, please. Stand to your feet, please.
you ain't gonna be a slave to a mortgage and that house don't even have equity in it you ain't gonna be slave to a car that depreciated by 17,000 the moment you pulled it off the lot and you're not gonna be a, a slave to family members who feel like it's your responsibility to keep bailing them out wherever you are in this room I I want to open the doors of the church. I want you to come. Three have already come. They, they were interrupted by the Holy Spirit to come in this hour. But there are still three more of you who need to come in alignment with them. I know that some of you felt the prodding of the Holy Spirit, but you didn't want to come at that time. Because the way that you were raised, you said, no, this ain't the time to come. Well, now is the time. I need you to join this church. I need you to get right with God I want you to come give me your hand thank you so much I want you to give me your hand but more than anything I want you to give God your heart I don't know where you are for the life of me but I need you at this altar please I'm not too proud to beg your life is on the line your soul is at stake you can't have another year like this year I want God to give you some stability, to give you some normalcy. I want God to give you some consistency. It's going to start right now. Thank you for, for these young ladies and for this young man that has come. But there's still others of you that need to come. Come on, help me please. Every person in the room, if you don't mind, if you don't mind, would you talk to two people right now? Ask them, are they saved? Ask them, do they have a church home? Ask them, have they given their life over to God? I can't believe y'all not talking to nobody. You really going to take their life for granted? Come on, right where it is that you are. Come on, don't fool me. Stretch your right hand to faith. And repeat after me, you're in the right place at the right time, joining the right church, serving the only God. And I know that's right. If you know I'm right, would you give God some praise right now? <clears throat> you may be seated in the presence of the Lord.